Hi friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren, you may also call me Lo, and today I'm bringing you my fall TBR. So, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing well, and let's get on into it. If you've been around for a little bit, you might know that I posted my first TBR video ever at the beginning of the summer, and it was kind of experimental because I'm not a person who typically has a TBR, I'm not very good at sticking to TBRs, but I did want to kind of challenge myself to read some books that to me kind of screamed summer, but weren't necessarily books that I probably would have picked up as quickly had I not made that TBR. So I put 10 books on there, and so far I've read eight of those, but I have until the end of September to read Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, as well as Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malore, so you can look forward to seeing these two books in a wrap-up very, very soon. And my new fall TBR will start on October 1st. So my summer TBR went really well. There were some duds, but there were some, like, really excellent five-star books in there. So I do want to continue to do seasonal TBR videos, and I'm so, so excited for fall because I'm really in the mood for kind of mystery, thriller, horror books, and that's what we're kind of looking at for fall. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the 10 books on my fall TBR. First, we're going to start off with a horror book that I am super, super excited about, and I've wanted to read for a long time, but just haven't picked up for whatever reason, and that is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This book takes place in a very kind of elite, prestigious, and mysterious boarding school called Catherine House. And at Catherine House, tuition is free, but students must give up a lot to attend the school. Students must give Catherine three years completely removed from the outside world. Family, friends, television, music, even their personal clothing must be left behind. In return, the school promises its graduates a future of sublime power and prestige. Among this year's incoming class is Ines, who expects to trade her blurry teenage nights of parties, pills, and cruel friends for rigorous intellectual discipline, only to discover an environment of sanctioned revelry. Even the school's enigmatic director, Victoria, encourages the students to explore their minds and bodies to find themselves and their place behind the formidable iron gates of Catherine. For Ines, the house is the closest thing to a home that she's ever had but its strange protocols soon make this refuge feel like a lavish prison. And when tragedy strikes, Ines begins to suspect that the school might be hiding a dangerous agenda within the secretive group of students studying its most mysterious curriculum. There are actually three, I think, books on this list that take place in boarding schools. I don't know why that is. I didn't really do that on purpose, but I think that there are a lot of, like, mystery, suspenseful kind of horror books that take place in boarding schools, so it'll be kind of cool to compare those. This is the first of the three, and I'm very, very excited to read this. Generally, this has had really good reviews, and yeah, I've been, I've been sitting on this one for a little while. Next is a book that went around booktube a while ago, and everyone was reading it, and this will be my second book by this author, although very, very different than the other one that I read, and that is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. What I know about this book is that it's also a boarding school book, but in this one, a school is kind of ravaged by this mysterious disease. And I know that this contains a lot of body horror, so if you are interested in reading this, just be cognizant of that. It started slow. First, the teachers died one by one. Then, the talks began to infect the students, turning their bodies strange and foreign. Now, cut off from the rest of the world and left to fend for themselves on their island home, the girls of Raxter School don't dare wander outside the surrounding fence, to where the tox has made the woods wild and dangerous. But when Byatt goes missing, Hetty will do anything to find her, even if it means breaking quarantine and braving the horrors that lie beyond. And when she does, Hetty learns that there's more to their story, to their life at Raxter, than she could have ever thought true. So that's Wilder Girls. This one's YA. I believe Catherine House is adult. 
could be wrong about that. And the other Rory Power book that I read was In a Garden Burning Gold, which is a fantasy book. I read an arc of that and I believe I gave it like three stars maybe three and a half stars, I don't really remember. That was in March, I believe, so if you'd like to see my review of that book, go check out my March wrap-up. But this book I feel like was a lot more popular than that one, uh, and I am really excited to finally get to it. The next two books are fantasy books. I feel like fall is kind of the beginning of wanting to pick up more fantasy for me, and winter is very, very fantasy heavy usually for me. So I have a couple, only two on this TBR, but my winter TBR will be very, very fantasy heavy. So the first fantasy on this list is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. I have not read an Alex E. Harrow book before. But Sydney absolutely loved this book. She said that the atmosphere in this book is perfect to read during fall time, so I've been saving this book for what feels like a very, very long time, and I'm so excited to finally get to it. I feel like fall is the perfect time for a witchy book. So in this book, witches no longer exist, but they used to. When the Eastwood sisters, James Juniper, Agnes Amaranth, and Beatrice Belladonna, join the suffragists of New Salem, they begin to pursue the forgotten words and ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. Stalked by shadows and sickness, hunted by forces who will not suffer a witch to vote, and perhaps not even to live, the sisters will need to delve into the oldest magics, draw new alliances, and heal the bond between them if they want to survive. I've been waiting patiently to read this book until fall, so I naturally cannot wait. Next is the second fantasy book on this list, and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This was a self-published book. It was picked up by a publisher because everyone was obsessed with it, and I have not gotten to it yet. I'm really excited for this book, mostly because it's really short and it's a vampire story, and I've heard such amazing things about this. I think the last person, but certainly not the only person, to rave about this book was Rachel from Raven Haired Reader. I'm stoked. Stoked to read this one. <laughs> this book is a reimagining of Dracula's Brides, and although I have never read Dracula, I still am really looking forward to this one. I've heard that it's not necessary to know the story of Dracula to read this, although I might read like a little summary or something online before I get started, just so I pick up on things that I may not have picked up on otherwise. Saved from the brink of death by a mysterious stranger, Constanta is transformed from a medieval peasant into a bride fit for an undying king. But when Dracula draws a cunning aristocrat and a starving artist into his web of passion and deceit, Constanta realizes that her beloved is capable of terrible things. Finding comfort in the arms of her rival consorts, she begins to unravel their husband's dark secrets. With the lives of everyone she loves on the line, Constanta will have to choose between her own freedom and her love for her husband. But bonds forged by blood can only be broken by death. Next is a book that I don't really feel like fits into this TBR as well as the rest, but I get fall vibes from it for some reason, even though it's not witchy and magical. It kind of feels witchy and magical. I just get that vibe can't explain it. And that is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I believe that this is just like historical fiction, but I mean look at the cover. It looks... it's got the... it's got the vibe, right? Hidden in the depths of 18th century London, a secret apothecary shop caters to an unusual kind of clientele. Women across the city whisper of a mysterious figure named Nella, who sells well-disguised potions to use against the oppressive men in their lives. Nella's dark world is no place for her newest patron, a precocious 12-year-old girl named Eliza Fanning, but their unexpected bond sparks a string of consequences that echoes through the centuries. 200 years later, aspiring historian Caroline Parswell discovers an aged apothecary vial in the River Thames. As she is newly grappling with the searing betrayal of her husband's infidelity, a curious research project is exactly the distraction Caroline needs. But when she discovers a link between the vial and London's long unsolved apothecary murders, Caroline's upended present soon collides with an explosive history, 
bringing her fate to Nella's and Eliza's in a stunning twist that transcends the barrier of time. I've heard sort of mixed things about this one, but I've been looking forward to reading it. I don't know why, it just sounds so, so good to me. So that's The Lost Apothecary. <laughs> Next is the third and final boarding school book, and this is an adult horror, and that is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This book is quite the chunker, but it's also a nice floppy paperback, which we love. Our story begins in 1902 at the Brook Haunts School for Girls. Flo and Clara, two impressionable students, are obsessed with each other and with a daring young writer named Mary McLean, the author of a scandalous, best-selling memoir. To show their devotion to Mary, the girls establish their own private club and call it the Plain Bad Heroine Society. They meet in secret in a nearby apple orchard, the setting of their wildest happiness and, ultimately, of their macabre deaths. This is where their bodies are later discovered with a copy of Mary's book splayed beside them, the victims of a swarm of stinging angry yellow jackets. Less than five years later, the Brookhot School for Girls closes its doors forever, but not before three more people mysteriously die on the property, each in a most troubling way. Over a century later, the now abandoned and crumbling Brook Haunts is back in the news when Wonderkind writer Merritt Emmons publishes a breakout book celebrating the queer feminist history surrounding the haunted and cursed Gilded Age institution. Her best-selling book inspires a controversial horror film adaptation starring celebrity actor and lesbian it girl Harper Harper playing the ill-fated heroine Flo, opposite B-list actress and former child star Audrey Wells as Clara. But as Brooke Hans opens its gates once again, and our three modern heroines arrive on set to begin filming, past and present become grimly entangled, or perhaps just grimly exploited, and soon it's impossible to tell where the curse leaves off and Hollywood begins. This is another book I purchased a while ago and I just kind of wanted to wait for like spooky season so I'm very very excited to read this one. I feel like this one's gonna take me a while to get through. It's over 500 pages. It's 617 pages long so this one's quite the commitment but I do want to get to it and now that it's on this list I I'm going to make myself finally read it. <laughs> Next is a horror book that I've seen all over booktube and I'm so so excited to read it. I've also just really wanted to read a book by this author for a while so I'm super excited about it and that is Sundial by Catriona Ward. All Rob wanted was a normal life. She almost got it too. A husband, two kids, a nice house in the suburbs. But Rob fears for her oldest daughter Callie who collects tiny bones and whispers to imaginary friends. Rob sees a darkness in Callie, one that reminds her too much of the family that she left behind. She decides to take Callie back to her childhood home, to Sundial, deep in the Mojave Desert. And there, she will have to make a terrible choice. Callie is worried about her mother. Rob has begun to look at her strangely and speaks of past secrets. Callie fears that only one of them will leave Sundial alive. I feel like the creepiest brand of horror book is horror books that have to do with like children. <laughs> children behaving creepily just gets me. So I think this one will definitely be an interesting read and I'm really, really excited to kind of jump on the bandwagon of this book and see what I think of it. Next is a thriller. This is the only thriller on this list. Although based on the synopsis of this book, I feel like it's like sort of horror, to be honest. And that book is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I've also been waiting to watch the adaptation of this book until I finally read the book, so I really, really do want to get to this one. On her way to Utah to see her dying mother, college student Darby Thorne gets caught in a fierce blizzard in the Colorado Rockies. With the roads impassable, she's forced to wait out the storm at a remote highway rest stop with no cell phone reception. Inside are some vending machines, a coffee maker, and four complete strangers. Desperate to find a signal to call home, the exhausted young art student goes back out into the storm and makes a horrifying discovery. In the back of a van parked next to her car is a little girl locked in an animal crate. Who is this child? Why has she been taken? And how can Darby save her? 
There's no way to call for help and no way out. One of her fellow travelers is a kidnapper, but which one? Trapped in an increasingly dangerous situation on the edge of civilization, with the child's life and her own on the line, Darby must find a way to break the girl out of the van and escape. But who can she trust? I've had this book on my radar literally forever. I feel like I'm saying that over and over, but it's true. Like, a lot of these books have been on my TBR for a pretty long time. This one's no exception. I'm very excited to read this one. I... Yeah, it just sounds so good. And I also feel like most of BookTube has already read this, so I just kind of want to catch up, so to speak. <laughs> two more books, and interestingly, these two books are often compared to each other, and they seem quite similar in that they're both gothic novels that take place in Mexico. So I'm really excited to read them somewhat sequentially and kind of compare them. I just think that would be really interesting. The first one is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I still have not read a Silvia Moreno-Garcia book, and I feel like most people start with this one, so I am excited to read this. This has been on my radar since it came out, and I just haven't gotten to it, so I'm so excited to finally do that. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin, Noemi Taboada heads to High Place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside, unsure what she will find. Noemi is an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante, more suited to cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. But she's also tough, smart, and not afraid. Not of her cousin's new English husband, a stranger who's both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch who seems fascinated by Noemi. And not even of the house itself, which begins to invade Noemi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Noemi's only ally in this inhospitable place is the family's youngest son, but he too may be hiding something dark. For there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place, as Noemi discovers when she begins to unearth stories of violence and madness. Mesmerized by this terrifying yet seductive world, Noemi may soon find it impossible to save her cousin or even escape this enigmatic house. I'm just so excited to read this. I'm also going to Mexico in October with Sean for like a little vacation slash surf trip. And I feel like it would be really fun to bring one of these gothic Mexico books on that trip. We'll see, but this is the first. And last but not least is The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. This book was a book of the month book in May. And I got it thinking, oh, this will be great for my fall TBR. So naturally, I had to put it on this list. And this one's compared to Mexican Gothic a lot. So like I said before, I'm very, very excited to compare them. During the overthrow of the Mexican government, Beatrice's father was executed and her home destroyed. When handsome Don Rodolfo Sorlozano proposes, Beatrice ignores the rumors surrounding his first wife's sudden demise choosing instead to seize the security that his estate in the countryside provides. She will have her own home again, no matter the cost. But Hacienda San Isidro is not the sanctuary she imagined. When Rodolfo returns to work in the capital, visions and voices invade Beatriz's sleep. The weight of invisible eyes follows her every move. Rodolfo's sister Juana scoffs at Beatriz's fears. But why does she refuse to enter the house at night? Why does the cook burn copal incense at the edge of the kitchen and mark the doorway with strange symbols? What really happened to the first Doña Sorlozano? Beatriz only knows two things for certain. Something is wrong with the hacienda, and no one will save her. So yeah, I think these two books, again, they sound super similar with like the creepy house and the setting and kind of the gothic nature of these books, so I'm very, very excited to try both of these and finally get to them. I tried to include a good amount of Book of the Month books on this list, so if you're a Book of the Month subscriber and you haven't picked up some of the books that you've ordered, hopefully I read some of them and review some of them and get you excited to read them. So that is it for my fall TBR. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books in the comments down below. If you're new to my channel, please consider liking this video and subscribing. I put one video out every week, 
sometimes too, if I can pull it off. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here. I always really appreciate it, and I will see you next time. <laughs>